everyone welcome to think then code today we will be solving the problem count increasing quadruplets so what the question says is we are given a zero index integer array nums of size n in which all the elements are from 1 to n only and we have to return the number of increasing quadruplets what is increasing quadruplet a quadruplet is four indices i j k l where i j k l are increasing but they satisfy this property nums of i is the smallest then nums of k then nums of j and then nums of l is the largest so these are the sample test cases and uh, what we are given is the array length is 4000 so we can only go for either a big of n big of n log n or big of n square approach so let's try to understand the intuition behind this problem what we are given is we are asked to find the number of quadruplets right and the quadruplets are represented as i j k l indexes these indexes are increasing and they the element that this indices should follow this property so what the first thing you should notice is j and k here k is greater than j but here it is swapped that is element at kth index is less than element at jth index so if we try to represent represent this equation in a visual form it would be something like this so ith index element at i th index is the smallest so this is the smallest the element at lth index is the largest so this is the largest now element at jth index is greater than element at kth index so if we form a element at jth index here then element at kth index would be here so this would make a graph something like this this visual representation kind of helps when you are solving the problem so if we see from i to l i is less than l but in between we are having this spike like irregularity of kind of some sort so what we can do is we can fix j and k how we can fix j and k we can just run two for loops we can fix j and k and try to find the number of ith elements and number of lth elements which satisfy this property above stated property how we would do this uh, let's try to understand it through a dry run so what we have to do is we have to find the number of quadruplets i j k l this is the condition and this is the visual representation this line so what we will do is we will have a pointer j pointer which represents our j th index as the answer and then for every j pointer we have a k pointer and remember these are j and k so we are not starting with first index because that is reserved for i and here at k side right side we are not starting with last because that's something which is reserved for l so we keep a j pointer we shift j pointer from left to right and for every j pointer we have a k pointer and we for every j and k we check these conditions so these conditions are basically came from here only e of k is less than e of j so first j is 3 k is 4 is 4 less than 3 no so we move our pointer here now 5 is also not less than 3 we move our pointer to 6 again the condition is not satisfied we move our pointer to 2 now since we move our pointer to 2 we find that 2 is less than 3 since 2 is less than 3 we can have an answer here so how we can have an answer according to the question what is that e of i is less than e of k so what we would do is we would try to find an element towards left of j which is less than this k right and we only we are only interested in its count so what is the count here only we have one which is less than two and in the same way what we are looking is 
we are looking at the right words of k pointer and we are trying to find number of elements which are greater than j why greater than j because that's the equation says e of l should be greater than j so what is the count which is greater than j greater than 3 we have basically 6 5 uh, 4 and 7 all are greater than 3 so at uh, left we have here 1 and then right we have 4. So basically we can make 4 quadruplets with 3 and 2 as j and k. That's the basic observation behind it. So we would add answer as 1 into 4 here. Now what we would do is we would shift our right pointer rightwards that is j pointer rightwards. Now first j was at 3, now j will be at 2. We again try all k from 4 to 6. Since uh, 4 is uh, not less than 2, then we go at 5. 5 is not also not less than 2, then we go at 6. 6 is also not less than 2. Then we again move our j pointer to 6. j pointer to 6 we start from 4 now 4 is less than 6 which means we can have our answer now again we check count of all possible e of i and what is e of i e of i is less than e of k so how many elements we have on the left side of j which are less than 4 so we have three elements which are less than 4 which are towards left side of j and again we check for count of all possible e of l. So what is e of l? e of l is greater than e of j. So we check towards right of k. Do we have any element which is greater than 6? Yes, we have only one element. So what we will do is we can total form three quadruplets with it. So we add 1 into 3 to our answer. Now what we would do is we would shift this k pointer from 4 to 5. As I said, for every j we are having k pointers from rightward to leftward. Now we check is if e of k is less than e of j. Yes, e of k is less than e of j. Now we count how many elements to the left of j are less than 5 in this area. So there are 3 elements which are less than 5. And how many towards the right of k are greater than 6. So in this we have only one element which is greater than 6 which is 7. So again 1 into 3 there are 3 quadruplets form. We add 1 into 3 to our answer. Then we would shift j towards rightwards. We will have only one possible k. Since e of k is less than e of j we again check how many elements towards the left of j which are less than 4 basically we have 3 elements here 1 3 2 and towards right of k which are greater than 5 we have only one element so again we can form 3 quadruplets more so basically our answer become 4 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 that is 13 so that's how the algorithm runs now you might be Confused that how we are able to get the count of the numbers which are less than e of k towards the left of j and in the right words also. So basically what we are doing is we are doing a big of n square pre-computation here. What is that pre-computation? We are basically storing the count of elements which, which are less than every possible number from 1 to n in a 2D array for every index. So how we are doing it? Let's look at the code. It will be very much clear. This is the accepted code. What we are doing it is we have created two 2D arrays left C and right C. So what this 2D arrays represent is left C of i comma number represent the count of elements which are less than number towards the left of ith index. And what right C represent is right C represent the count of elements which are greater than number 
towards the right of ith index and that's what's required to us also we want to know towards left smaller elements and towards right greater elements so that's how the purpose of the problem is being solved by left c and right c and how we are making these first we are traversing the array and then the numbers from 1 to n since our array will only have number of values from 1 to n where n is the size of the array as it is given in the question we traverse it and for every number we check if our nums of i is less than that number if it is it is contributing to left c so we increment left c and copy the answer from the previous index and that's how left c is created right c is very similar to left c if nums of i is greater than number which means the current element is contributing to right c we increment and we copy the previous row answer previous index answer then we run two for loops as we saw in the dry run j and k we fix j and k j start from one index and k start from for every corresponding j from second last index we check this condition nums of j is greater than nums of k as we saw here this condition and if this condition is true we get the count we get the left count and what is left count the number of elements which are lesser than nums of k and that's what is required number of e of i e of i is less than e of k so we get number of elements till jth index which are less than nums of k and what rc gives us rc is number of elements which are greater than nums of j number of elements for e of l greater than e of j greater than e of j which are towards the right of kth index once we get this both two numbers we multiply which gives us the number of quadruples and we finally return our answer i hope you got the approach the time complexity of this approach is big of n square because this pre computation and this pre computation is taking big of n square and this jk loop is also a big of n square the space complexity will also be big of n square i hope you like the approach if you did please like and subscribe hope to see you in the next video